Hello my friends, today we are diving deep into IOTEX, a project focused on enabling a renaissance in a pretty massive niche, which is Internet of Things or IoT, which you've probably used if you have any of those nifty smart home devices in your house. I'm going to share everything you need to know about the project and how it works under the hood. And if you like deep dives like this that are focused on education, please hit the subscribe button and the little bell to get notified of new crypto content every single week. Now for full transparency right up front, I was fortunate enough that IOTEX was willing to sponsor this video to help me share this informational content with you. That said, like all my other content, sponsored or not, I'm not here to shill tokens or call you to action to buy tokens. My focus is providing you with tangible information that you need to kickstart your research as you decide what to do in the market. All right, so let's kick this off by setting the stage on the problem that IOTEX is aiming to solve in the first place. So to truly understand IOTEX, one must have a cursory understanding of the problem it is aiming to solve, and its name gives you a major hint as to what the problem is. IoT is a term that some of you might be familiar with, but if you're not, it stands for Internet of Things. In fact, if you have a smart device in your home for security or voice-activated lighting, basically anything labeled smart is technically an IoT device. And it seems as if every single household item is now available as an internet connected device that can be automated or communicate with your phone or other devices from lights to toaster ovens to doorbells, basically everything. However, IoT devices themselves suffer from a key set of problems, right? A key set of challenges. First of all, a lack of security and privacy is often ascribed to IoT devices for a multitude of reasons. One being poor encryption standards, another being that the IoT world is very fragmented, leaving the public internet as the only enmeshment option for cross-device communication. And these two problems kind of feed one another because a lack of interoperability forces less than ideal security and privacy decisions, or at the very least, larger attack surfaces for hackers. And the general malaise around security and privacy means that many IoT developers invent their own solutions to these problems, further reinforcing the issue of fragmentation. Now, with those kind of challenges that all work kind of in tandem with each other, as a backdrop, let's think about IoTex now. IoTex itself seeks to provide a robust platform based on blockchain technology that can help alleviate a lot of these problems providing a heterogeneous network on which IoT devices can connect and exchange data securely and privately. Now, I will address this right up front because it will inevitably come up in the comments. IoTex is, of course, not the only project tackling this challenge, with IOTA being the most often talked about platform in the mix. I would like to state very clearly that despite what you read online, there is not one singular solution that rules them all here, and IOTA is not the only game in town. IOTA and IOTEX have wildly different approaches to the same problem, and this video is about IOTEX and not IOTA. IOTEX's vision for a deeply interconnected network of IoT devices centers squarely on blockchain technology rather than the Tangle base layer that IOTA is building upon. To begin to illustrate this vision in a bit more detail related to IOTEX, let me give you a tangible example of this platform in action. Now, OG fans of my channel will remember that I did a review of a home security camera called UCAM way back in the day. And I still actually use that today, by the way. It's in my kitchen right now. And that was my first introduction to IOTEX. And it actually led me to doing this review, to be honest, because when the opportunity arose to do a partnership with IOTEX, I jumped at the opportunity because that product built on their tech stack is awesome, right? Anyway, a home security camera has long been a concern for privacy and security proponents because video feeds of one's family are at risk if poor security measures are put into place. The UCAM device, though, powered by IOTEX, utilizes IOTEX's componentry to establish a private key-based encryption and authentication mechanism where only I, who holds my private key, can access my camera feed and all the associated data related to that camera in storage. Not even Tenvis, the manufacturer of UCAM, can access any of that information. This leverages the core cryptographic primitives that blockchain technology uses. A private key is foundational to everything as the core of a DID or decentralized identity on the IOTEX platform. And this is one of the cornerstones of the philosophy behind IOTEX, to put you or I, the owner of the data and the device, back in control. 
Rather than relying on a centralized repository that can be hacked and expose all of your personal and sensitive data, with your private key, only you can access the data pertaining to your devices. Of course, there's more to this platform than authentication and encryption with user own private keys. So let's now, given this example, dive into the specifics of the IOTEX blockchain platform and its different components. Now, if we look at IOTEX's platform like a layered cake, if you will, which is an analogy I hope that every single person watching this can relate to because seriously, who doesn't love cake? If you've never had cake, I'm sorry. The base layer that supports everything above it is the blockchain component itself. It's the root of trust, as IOTEX refers to it as. If you refer back to the original IOTEX white paper from way back in the day, you should find many references to a complex sidechain mechanism for achieving scalability through parallelism, which is not so different from sharding approaches that you might find in chains like Elrond or Ethereum 2.0 spec. However, today, IOTEX relies solely on its main root blockchain and its randomized delegated proof of stake consensus mechanism that gives the network plenty of headroom in regards to scalability today. That being said, the concept of scaling solutions in the future that relate to sidechains might entail this purpose-built approach that takes the load off the root chain and brings it into sidechains when the need arises. So it's not out of the cards yet. Today, IOTEX is not facing scalability issues though that would warrant deep development on efforts like that. So this scalable root blockchain is an EVM compatible layer one blockchain and it has been on mainnet since 2019 as the core transactional layer on which the IOTEX ecosystem is built. The blockchain itself enables community governance by way of staking of the native IOTX coin and it offers five second block times and near instant transaction finality, which feeds the large scale volume that IoT devices will demand. Of course, these metrics are derivative of the consensus mechanism on the blockchain, which brings me to the IoTex consensus mechanism itself. The sheer volume of IoT devices and their transaction volume means that any solution that offers security and privacy cannot do so at the expense of scalability. So IOTEX presented a solution for the heart of their root blockchain layers consensus that would provide scalability to the highest possible degree without sacrificing that security. This consensus mechanism is dubbed Roll DPoS with the roll in the name standing for the randomness of a dice roll. It is irrefutable that despite in its inherent scalability, delegated proof of stake has traditionally made concessions in the decentralization department because it relies on a group of elected delegates to carry out block making responsibilities. But IOTEX, among others, have learned from the mistakes of old in implementing DPoS or delegated proof of stake with the lowest degree of possible trade off here. So IOTEX's role DPoS or randomized delegated proof of stake mechanism relies on randomness, the magical fairy dust that is randomness. And this helps alleviate the concern around centralization because during each consensus cycle, often referred to as an epoch in the blockchain world, 24 new block producers are chosen from the top 36 highest voted delegates in the network to take on the responsibility of validating transactions during that epoch. Of the total 100 delegates, only the top 36 by community vote are included in the random dice roll that selects the 24 to do the block making. So this reduces the risk of collusion and plutocracy from running rampant. And one thing that warms my heart about IOTEX is that unlike all the EVM compatible or Ethereum virtual machine compatible layer ones who advertise themselves as Ethereum killers, IOTEX does not. I quote from their docs, although architecturally similar to Ethereum, IOTEX is not an Ethereum killer. Rather, IOTEX will be the hub for decentralized IoT data and devices and collaborate with Ethereum and other layer one platforms. Collaboration. I love it. And for developers, they benefit from this because they have the ability to use existing Ethereum tools that they're used to building with on IOTEX because it is EBM compatible and smart contracts written in the native Solidity language that many Web3 developers are used to these days will also work. Speaking of building, now is also a good time to start building layers on that cake analogy that I talked about earlier because the blockchain itself is not the full story. On top of the core blockchain layer, there are several pieces of technology and abstractions that make IOTEX tailor-made for the Internet of Things use cases. The middle layers of this stack are what make all the difference, which consist of primitives for decentralized identity, 
Oracle Data Services, and Trusted Execution Environments, or TEE compute layers for trusted devices. So let me break these down a little bit more so it's clear what they are and what value they have. First, consider the fact that the world of Internet of Things in general depends on a full technology stack. And what I mean by that is that you have the convergence of hardware and software from top to bottom. And this brings to fore certain challenges that need to be addressed. For one, in order to establish a secure foundation for each device to communicate with others, each device must have a discrete identification mechanism. So this is where decentralized identity comes into play. And IOTEX leverages the underlying public key cryptography that underpins blockchain technology to establish a digital identity that empowers only the holder of the corresponding private key to access data pertaining to a given device. Now, this holder could be the device itself or the user who owns that device. And in fact, IOTEX has developed a digital identity or DID specification that it uses for its decentralized identity and access management protocol on its platform. And it is an underrated component of their tech stack. It's one of the coolest pieces in this puzzle. Adjacent, though, to that identity layer, the world of IoT is synonymous with the idea of data flowing from off-chain hardware devices onto the blockchain, which, for those familiar with the space, will immediately evoke the idea of an oracle. That said, IoTex has built a framework for IoT-trusted devices to become oracles themselves which leverages the decentralized identity mechanisms to allow devices to sign and transmit data from the real world to the blockchain for use in decentralized applications. IOTEX envisions this Oracle framework being used to feed data into other blockchain ecosystems like Polkadot by way of cross-chain bridges, filling a huge need in the space, physical devices feeding data in. Now, if we keep moving up the stack here, I've alluded to the final component, which is what helps capture the value of the decentralized identity and Oracle frameworks, and that is the hardware itself. The Internet of Things is not a thing without hardware, and IOTEX has also put together a hardware framework that utilizes a trusted execution environment to handle the sensitive and security demanding processes such as holding its own DID slash private key or cryptographically signing transactions to be sent to the blockchain. Trusted execution environments are used today for sensitive or confidential computing operations all over the tech world, and it's broadly applicable to IoT here in particular. In fact, IoTex has produced the first physical hardware based on this platform called the Pebble, which combines this trusted execution environment architecture with a series of sensors to report data such as temperature or GPS location back to the blockchain in a trusted manner, where the device signature slash identity and the data's integrity can be verified on chain. So what you see with the pebble is the culmination of all these layers, the DID, the Oracle framework, and the trusted execution environment all coming together. And you can see IOTEX's strategy when you see how each layer works to enable the one adjacent to it. Each one is a force multiplier for the other, building blocks. IOTEX has also put together quite a few powerful developer tools for smart contract development, data visualization and dashboarding, and all that kind of stuff to take advantage of the technologies that we've discussed today. And it's the thoughtfulness that's gone into the design of IOTEX without niche technical implementations or components that are hard to adopt or frivolous in complexity, which makes it a powerful contender in the decentralized renaissance of IoT. Hey, this is Hishoshi from the future. By the time I had finished recording this and got into post-production, a pretty significant announcement from IOTEX had come to the surface, so I wanted to add this segment and talk about it very briefly, okay? So the concept of machine fi, which was just introduced by IOTEX, is described as this sort of sector of projects that sits at the intersection of IoT, the machines, and finance. So the details of MachineFi as a concept and what will be launched in the coming days is still somewhat shrouded in mystery, even at the time of recording. But I can only imagine that there is something up IOTEX's sleeve related to DeFi primitives interwoven with real world data or smart devices. So just thinking about it, I can imagine MachineFi as a world where an autonomous drone that I own can go and help build maps for Google Maps by scanning the roadways from the sky and then I get paid for that data contribution in some form of cryptocurrency. Or a machine of mine contributes data to an on-chain mechanism as an oracle and I get paid. The machine economy really to me means that the lines between our connected devices and the world of decentralized finance 
begin to blur and merge. And that idea alone has my imagination running. So I left a link to the MachineFi website for you if you wanna dig deeper, it might even be live by the time you click on it, but leave a comment below with your ideas for what MachineFi is, this whole new announcement from IOTEX. Thanks. When the opportunity arose to partner with IOTEX to share the information in this video, it was a no-brainer because I've used hardware products that are powered by IOTEX's technology and feel that the project is underrated by a pretty significant margin. And I think it's because people haven't taken a deep enough dive into the project. So I encourage you to do more research on it. Today, we've taken a dive into the inner workings of IOTEX, the component parts, and it should help as a sort of foundational knowledge builder in terms of how IOTEX is tackling many of their challenges in the IoT space with decentralized tech. If you wanna dive deeper into the IOTEX ecosystem, which I highly recommend, or you wanna try it for yourself, please do visit the links in the description and the pinned comment below, where I will leave plenty more reading for you to do. And I wanna thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, to learn with me. If you have questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you have some time to stick around, I'll leave a couple of more educational deep dive videos here for you on the screen, if you would like to click and check those out. But regardless of that, I hope you and your family have a wonderful week ahead. And until next time, cheers.